Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. People ask me all the time about writing hack and whether they need to learn it before joining Meta. The short answer is no, because you'll learn it on the job, but for all of you that are curious, here's all you need to know about the language in less than 10 minutes. For a super fast intro, hack is our internal version of PHP that was created something like 10 years ago because PHP was and still is crap and couldn't scale to the billions. It's a statically typed language that's written in the style of PHP and Java, but it has a high focus on performance. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, let's batch this out. Similar to PHP, all hack files will start with a header like you do in PHP. The primitive types you have are boolean, int, float, string, and null. You also have a mix type, but this is absolute clown town, so please don't use this shit, especially not in prod. You can cast from one type to another using a syntax like this, where you'll have in parentheses the type you want to cast to and a variable so for example casting to a string would look like string and then the variable name whoops okay variables they are always snake case if you have a class variable then it's camel case where the first letter is lowercase okay so what are the common data structures you're going to be using the first one is a vec which is hacks equivalent of a list it is initialized like this my vector equals vec with brackets if you want to add values, you simply have the name of the variable that you want to assign to, and then open brackets equals the item you want to add. Dictionary is a dictionary, like the name implies. The keys here will be ordered, and it's initialized in the same way as vec, except you pass the dict keyword, and you initialize key value pairs like this. You pass in the dictionary, brackets, the key, and some value. Keys must be either strings or integers. You also have key sets, which is an ordered data structure without duplicates, and only integers and strings are allowed inside. Again, it's initialized in the exact same way, where you're going to have my set equals to key set. Another thing you might run, run into is called a shape. It's like a dictionary, except with named keys. For example, you could have a shape which has some key, and this key is an integer. You might have another key, and this is going to be a dollar sign string. And when you have a dollar sign in front of a um, type, this means that the type is actually nullable. And you might have a dollar sign, a key, and then a value. What this means is that the key may or may not be present, but if it does exist, then it will be of type int. You could also have the key be um, nullable and the type be nullable, which means that the key may or may not exist and the value may or may not be null. Okay, so typically we use this for declaring types or um, constants. So for example, you can have, you know, const type, some type name equals shape, and then the shape will have some fields here. And then you can use that as a type uh, later on. Okay, functions. Functions pretty similar. Um, you're going to basically say public function, and then the name of the function, this is going to be in camel case, you pass in the type hint first, and then the variable name. And you can also have nullable um, parameters. You can also have default parameters for null values. And then it's going to have the return type and then whatever code is inside of your function. You can also have async functions, and these must be marked with an async keyword as part of the function declaration. And typically we always will prefix any async function with gen. So that way you know that it's a async. So for example, here public async function gen, my example async function, and all async functions must return an awaitable. So you just wrap whatever the return type is in awaitable and you're good to go. And the way that you call these functions is that you're gonna assign some uh, variable, actually you don't even have to assign a variable, you're just gonna call it using the await keyword and then your uh, function here. If you don't do the await, the type checker will yell at you. So as you've noticed, we have async and await and async processing is actually heavily used at Meta and a large majority of functions in our kind of hack repo are actually async. So like we mentioned, async functions will always return awaitable and some return type. You need to use async uh, in the function declaration here. You need to use the keyword uh, async. You need to await them, obviously, otherwise you're not gonna get the result. And you can actually bundle two or more independently executing async functions uh, with a concurrent block. So for example, if you have two um, async functions which are not related to each other, for example, this function doesn't need the output of this function to run, then you can actually run them concurrently. This isn't actually guaranteed to be faster or better performance, but it usually is, and it's considered good practice to write these, but don't think just because you add them, you're going to be 
improving your performance. It's not always guaranteed. So in terms of control flow, it's really going to be the same stuff as in PHP or Java, all the standard stuff you want or expect. If, else, if, else, for, for each, while, switch, blah, 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 pretty standard stuff. Now, one thing that you will not have seen before once you, and you will actually, once you come to Facebook is how we use the standard library. And there's actually a few functions that we use quite commonly. Um, there's not that many, you'll get to grips with the other ones, but these are the main ones you need to know. C contains basically is an element in a traversable. So for example, C contains in this vector, are we, we asking if two is in the vector one, two, three, which is obviously is true. We also have C contains key, which is the exact same as C contains, except it's meant for dictionaries or key sets. So is the key in your dictionary? Yes or no. C count, this is going to be the length of a given collection basically how many elements are in there. If it's a dictionary, it's going to count off of the keys. Um, we also have C is empty. So basically, if a given collection has elements, yes or no. Um, and this is just going to return a Boolean. We also have some string stuff, for example, string format, you can format a string using, you know, all of the kind of format things we're not going to go over all of them. Um, you can find this online, but you can, you know, format an integer, format a string, format a list of strings, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. We also have string split, which is pretty standard as it, you'd expect you pass in the string pass the delimiter you want to split on and then it would turn a vector of the things that managed to split. You also have string contains basically does a string contain a substring? Yes or no, this will turn a uh, Boolean. Then we have the vector things. Vec map is a very useful function that you use all the time, which is essentially going to be applying a lambda function over each item in a list. So for example, if we have vec map over the vector one, two, three, and our lambda function is that we take an item, and this is our lambda functions notation, we have the item, then we have um, this arrow, and it's two kind of equal signs. And then the this is how we build it. Um, for each item plus two. So if we ran this vec map, we should expect for each item we add two. So this should be three, four and five. This also works for async. The syntax is a little bit different. You need to call await. Obviously, the function name will change to map async. And then you need to put async in front of the item um, that you're looping over for your uh, lambda function. And then you just proceed to define the function as normal. Okay, we also have vec filter nulls. So if you have a vector with nulls, you can actually just get rid of them pretty straightforward. Vec unique, this one's also pretty straightforward. Given a vector, if you call vec unique on it, it will just give you the unique elements. We have vec flatten, um, which will basically just take a list of lists and flatten them into one list. Uh, and then for dictionary, we also have dict map, which is similar to vect map, except we're going to be returning a new dictionary where each value is the result of calling the lambda function on your value. So basically, if we have a dictionary, which has key one, key two, key three, and these are the values one, two, three, if we basically multiply each value by two, because that's the lambda function we're applying, we should expect two, four, six, because one times two, two times two, three times two, blah, blah, blah. Okay, dict pull, this is another really useful one where basically you're going to again be looping over an iterable, except this time you can actually specify a function um, for the key and the value and it will define the dictionary based on those um, lambda functions. So for example, if we have one, two, three, and our key function here is to apply a string to the to the item and that becomes the key and then the value becomes basically squaring the item. So if you have one, the key would become a string one, we square one, obviously that's still one, two, string two, square it. So now it's four, three, and nine, you get the gist. So really, that's all you really need to know to work at meta. These are the things that we use all the time. You'll just learn this stuff once you get to the job. This is more just a high level overview. If you're curious, these are the things that you should be aware of everything else you'll learn on the job. It's really easy. We have a great developer ecosystem around hack. And it's really not that hard. So I will just end the video there. No need to make it super long. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like comment, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.